Yeah, great to be back. Uh, do you actually know that it's the only conference I'm aware of that has Jack Daniels at the speaker's, uh, speaker's podium? <laughs> but that's not the reason why I'm back, hopefully. So, so I'm working for a company that just open sourced.net. Just in case you haven't seen it, you can actually download it on Coplex, which really means uh, cross-platform is, is a big, big thing for us. And I'm coming from a country where even young people still wear watches. Switzerland. So this talk is about something I just experienced in the last couple of years. Uh, with the mobile first, cloud first, uh, that pushing messages to mobile is actually not that simple if we talk about millions of them. So who of you develop mobile apps? Just a few of you, yeah? So who of you actually develops a backend that has to push stuff to mobile apps? Who of you uh, never run into an issue while doing so? Yeah, you see. So since we have the very same problem, uh, we actually built something which is called notification hubs. So what I want to talk to you over the next 45 minutes is, first of all, introduce you to the concept of push notifications and how they work across all the platforms. Then going to introduce you how we can personalize them how we can actually make them cross-platform. And last but not least, I want to show you how we actually build a weather warning system for South Africa using that stuff, which means I require some Wi-Fi bandwidth to do so. Most of you actually have apps on your devices that use push notifications. Uh, and the, the issue is that we all have different device platforms, and uh, push notification is part of the mobile platform, so you actually have different ways to push notifications to different platforms. So what you see here is the actual push payload on the top for Windows 8. Then you see the push payload for the Apple push service. And on the very bottom, you see the push payload for GCM, which is the Google Cloud Messaging Service. But they don't only have different payloads. They have different ways how you subscribe to it and how you send the message. And furthermore, even on, on the client side, they have different ways how you actually receive that particular message. So let's have a look a little bit into details. Conceptually, they all work the same. Uh, by the way, why, why do you actually use the notification service rather than sending text messages or, you know, listening on a port for receiving uh, certain information or messages? So there are two reasons for it. First of all, push is way, way, way cheaper than using text messages, especially if you do this in the millions. Uh, and the second one is, you know, our devices, many of them, they're not yet have the battery capacity to actually run, run a service all the time. So that's why all these uh, operating systems that we have on our devices, they have something they call a push notification client, which is the one service that listens for incoming messages, and then distributes it to the relevant applications. So the way this works in general is, if you are building an application on a device, and you want to create a, or you want to be able to receive push notifications, you first register your application with the platform notification service, which is different for iOS, for Android, 
and the Windows platform. What you get back is actually a channel URI which identifies your device and the application. As a second step, then, you send this URI to your backend. So you store it. And with this, you exactly know for, if I want to send to you a push notification to your app, which is your, let's say, your weather app, I use this URI. As you can imagine, if you have millions of users, you're going to have millions of handles that you have to keep fresh. Once I really want to send this push notification, I'm not sending this to the device. I'm actually sending my message to the notification service, which then distributes it to the device. And if it arrives on the device, it actually gets distributed to the respective app. If you look into a little bit into more detail, what you really see is the app communicates with the client notification service. So the client notification service really wraps the communication to the platform notification service. So you're going to have an API on Android, an API on, uh, on iOS and on Windows to actually retrieve the handle and to get notified when a notification takes place. So that's kind of the one-on-one on this. But there are a couple of challenges that makes this quite complicated when you have to deal with more than 10 or 20 uh, clients. So the first one really is there is a unique token per device and app. And depending on the platform, you actually have to refresh this with every startup uh, on a daily basis or when the device is shut down or gets restarted. So you have to really deal with these tokens. So you have to persist them, to refresh them, and you have to be able to re retrieve them to actually send these messages. The second challenge that is not very apparent is time to deliver the message. So it, it's roughly one millisecond to actually place the asynchronous HTTP call to the different push notification services. So if you want to send millions of messages, you're actually ending up with 60 minutes. And if you want to guarantee that you deliver this message within one minute max, you have to have 32 servers running. But they have to be up and running. Otherwise, you can't deliver the message in time. Now, why is it important to deliver the message in time? If you subscribe to sports news, you want to be notified when the goal happens and not 15 minutes later. Although, one caveat here, there is no guaranteed delivery. So none of these uh, notification services actually guarantee you the delivery. So what we're talking about here is really just sending the message to the notification service. This is actually a real challenge if you start to think about large-scale applications when you're dealing with large-scale sports events. Or like the weather warning I was just talking about, if you want to warn people about a big storm which actually comes across the Cape. And then it, it becomes even more challenging when you want to personalize the message. So personalize, what does it mean? Uh, you want to have your message in Afrikaans, you want to have your message in English. And by the way, uh, you want to have it in Celsius, you would like to have it in Fahrenheit, and I would like to have a picture with it, and you won't. And this all the platforms, uh, you might have one Android device, you might have another device which actually runs Windows and so forth. So you start to see this becomes quite complex uh, if you really want to handle this. But what if you're not interested in all messages? So what if you're only interested in the rugby news? And by the way, uh, only when it has been written by let's say Rob, Ben, or Paul, or only if it is your club that plays against another club. 
So you start to see that whole thing of sending one message becomes a fairly complicated landscape. And uh, run into this and created a notification hub for this. And if you think about the problem we try to solve here, you have multiple endpoints here, and you have one guy that actually sends a message, and then you have a hub in place that distributes it to this endpoint. So it's really kind of a pop-sup. And since we already had something which is a pop-sup, highly scalable in the cloud, which is called Service Bus, we actually used the service bus to build Notification Hub. We then use it, for instance, for Bing. Uh, just to give you an idea, it's installed on 10 millions of devices, uh, three plus millions of notifications per day, and they are delivered with a latency less than two minutes. For Sochi, we had a very interesting challenge. Uh, so, so the Olympics, Winter Olympics, we actually had hundreds of interest groups. So think about this like this these routing issue that you're going to run into. Then we had to localize this across many, many, many languages uh, to 3 million plus devices across all the platforms, uh, which resulted in 150 plus million notifications. So how does the Notification Hub work? In its essence, move the complexity from the edge to the Notification Hub. So a lot of the stuff we want to do is actually, at the moment, we register with the Hub. So the Hub then can take a lot of actions by itself. So when we send a message from our backend, we can actually send just one message and the complexity is reduced and it gets delivered to all the registered devices. I will get into this in more detail fairly soon. So in the beginning, it's very simple. I still have to retrieve my URI. When I have my URI, I register with the notification hub. You see, I'm not registered with my very own backend application. My backend application then simply sends a message and the Notification Hub retrieves all registered handles and delivers the message. So this is fairly straightforward. So what happens if we have more than one notification platform? We simply just register with uh, the GCM handle, we register with the APN handle, and when we deliver the message, we actually deliver the GCM message, the APN message, and that gets automatically recognized by the platform and sends it to the respective notification service. So how does this look like from a registration perspective? You simply use the client API to register with the hub. And to register with the hub, you actually need your channel URI. So, for instance, for the ones who use Android, you create an instance of the Google Cloud Messaging, and then you retrieve the URI, the channel URI, and then you register it with the hub. So this is straightforward, but it still has some complexity. Complexity because we still have to know uh, what are the different platforms? If you want to send something to someone, uh, is he actually using an Android device? Is he using an iOS device? So that means when I send the message, I still have to send it in its native format. So what you see is a Windows message, I actually send an APS message, and on the very bottom, an Android. They still look the same, and I still actually have to tell the hub what type of message this is. So let's remove that complexity. And for this, we introduced something like templates. And I think this is really, really cool, because what you can do is, you can basically say, hey, I register a template format, and then the notification hub replaces the actual values of this template with the message that I actually send. 
So again, we move the complexity from the edge into the service. So what you see here is I use a Android message format on the top and an APS message format on the bottom. And then I have a template with the dollar sign, which is message. So now, from a notification hub's perspective, the only thing I send is the template value. So I only send the message which has a value of hello. So no, no complexity about the different platforms now on the backend side. So we remove that complexity there. So if I, for instance, going to send hello, it automatically gets replaced while we're sending the message to the actual client. I come back to templates a little bit later because we can use templates in far more sophisticated ways. We can actually use templates to personalize messages. So think about this. Now I call, call a template message English, and I call a template message Afrikaan. Afrikaans. Hmm? Afrikaans. Afrikaans. Uh, uh. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, I'm not called Cloud Biatch. Huh? <laughs> So, goye more, goye more. Yeah. So you see, we remove that complexity. I send two messages, one in Afrikaans and one in English, and the not notification hub takes place of this. So you can actually replace this. Now. You can go way further with this. So imagine you want to send a message that contains a picture of a weather forecast. And you want to allow people to have a personalized view on it. So you're either interested in a three days or five days forecast. So for instance, Bob wants to have an image for five days in Celsius in English. Ben wants to have a three days forecast in Fahrenheit in English, and Peter, three days Celsius Afrikaan. I should have chosen German. <laughs> As you can imagine, it gets even worse because it's part of the demo. <clears throat> So when I send my message, I now just send a message that contains all these combinations. So the message from my backend basically contains the URLs for all these combinations. And then the notification hub picks the right one, replaces it with the templated format, and sends it to the, to the device. So this, as you can imagine, is already quite powerful if you want to provide users with a fairly flexible and personalized experience. Now, the next step really is how do we deal with this notion of I'm only interested in rugby messages, or I'm only interested in weather warnings in the Western Cape, uh, and by the way, because I live at the coast, I'm only interested in big waves, but not really in snow or something like that. The way we can do this is when we register, and remember, this is based on a pop-up service, which has topics. So what we do is we register with our interest for certain topics. So I register, for instance, for Western Cape, and uh, on the bottom, I register for Eastern Cape. So when I now send the message, I basically say the topic is Western Cape, and the, the message is weather warning. And as you can see, only the top app actually gets that message delivered.
So now we can actually root certain messages. So we removed again quite some complexity there. If, for instance, I have tags which, so I want to send a message for a weather warning that uh, affects the Eastern and the Western Cape, I just send it, you know, with two tags, like Western and Eastern, so both apps actually get the message delivered. Really interesting is now we can use expressions. So it's not like you can now only say, hey, uh, if this tag is registered, I'm going to send the message to this endpoint. No, we can actually define um, uh, expressions. So for instance, I can say this message is only for people who are interested in weather warnings of heavy rain and are in the Cape area. Because if you're, if you're, for instance, in Eastern Cape, you're not interested in heavy rain, which takes place in Western Cape. Start to think about the, the, the capability that we introduce with expressions. Expressions are just strings. You can build the strings yourself, which means I, I just used, for instance, here a column to separate, so what is the, the tag name and then the actual tag value. But they're, they're one tag, but I can do very interesting things with this. So for instance, I can send the message to one particular user by saying, user is Richard. Or I can send the message to a group except to the person who actually is the, the one who defined the message. So I say send it to the group uh, interested in rugby, but not to user Richard. Because user Richard, we know that user Richard subscribed to Richard, uh, user Richard. We actually can recognize devices. So we can push a notification to a device because you ha might have the same app installed across multiple devices. So we can actually send it to one specific device. We can even say, we're only gonna send it to an app where Richard is actually using that device if there are multiple users on the same device. You can do very interesting things in terms of dining. Think about, you have a dining app and you're in a certain time zone or in a certain location or you have geocoding and I know you're interested in a certain type of food. So I basically can say, if you're currently in the PST time zone and you're interested in Thai food, then I'm gonna send you this notification that we have a rebate on, on food. And last but not least, if you wanna push certain service updates or stuff, you can even you know, specify, I'm running on version 1.0 of my app and I'm actually running on Android. So you see, you, you can really do a lot of stuff by using tags because they're really just strings. So what I want to show you now is how you actually can build a weather app which is in its basic extremely simple to do, but if you start to think if you want to send weather warnings, really has to scale. So the approach I took here is I I, I created an Android front-end, a Windows front-end. On the very back-end, I actually use something which is called mobile services on Windows Azure, but you can just pick whatever web application you want. The reason why I picked uh, mobile services is it allows me to run a script every time I'm gonna add a new entry. So I wrote the script in Node.js that simply just sends uh, the message to the notification hub. So now I think I need Oh yeah, and, and by the way, the way it works is you have a area, so like Western Cape, Eastern Cape, and then you have the ability to s select, let me, to select, so you, you pick the area you want or the region, then you select the type of warning and you provide a English message and an Afrikaan message. So the way this gets delivered is 
if you are in Western Cape and it's heavy rain, then the message gets delivered to Western Cape heavy rain. So if in Western Cape there are big waves and heavy rain, you only get one message for this. So we're going to send one notification message per region. If there is heavy rain in Eastern and Western Cape and you subscribe to Eastern and Western Cape, you're going to get two notification messages. So this is the way I just built uh, this application. So now um, I need some help. Yeah. So let me first show you the notification hub, uh, which you see as really just a service bus instance. And what I did is that's where I actually hook up the different platform providers. So I simply can just configure uh, for the ones who use uh, notifications for different platforms, that's where you register your application. So this is, for instance, on Windows, you have a package sit. Uh, and for Google Cloud Messaging, you, you have an API key, a GCM API key. So that's how I configure it. So that's how the notification hub knows to, 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 um, to, which, device, uh, uh, to which notification service belongs to which device there. So now, that's all I have to do here. So the next thing I want to show you is the script that I run when I actually insert a new message. And with inserting a new message, what I mean is by simply storing that information on the back end. And, but that should then trigger the, the, that then should trigger the notification to be sent. So this is purely a web front end of my back end. So just for visualization purposes. So as you see, uh, this is actually in Node.js. Uh, sending the notification requires me the African text, the English text, then a array of regions and an array of warnings. And the whole thing is actually as simple as I'm going to send a notification for every region. So you see this here. I then just build the uh, the message for English, build the message for Afrikaans. And I... Could you read that, please? Uh, yeah, where was going wir? <laughs> okay. <laughs> build the tag expression, so which defines the routing. So you see, I'll, I'll literally just join the warnings array as a or, and then I add the region as an AND expression. So that really means you, if you subscribe to a certain region, you get the weather warning for that particular region if you also so subscribe to that particular weather warning. Sending it is then as simple as calling send with the tag expression, the actual notification, which is our string here, and that's it. So that's the back end. That's as simple to actually write an app that pushes notifications to all these clients. So now let's have a look on a client side. And I used um, Windows 8, but I also have uh, an Android version of that one. So what I do here is I really just get the URI. So I basically retrieve the channel URI, then I I'll register all previous re registrations with this particular URI. I then just take the, the categories. Categories is nothing else than uh, rain, snow, big waves, so basically my tags. Add also the regions to it. And then I register with my native format here. And you see, I'm actually using a template, templated notification for the region and the actual warning text. So when I run this application, you will see I have now the ability to say I'm interested in heavy rain in Afrikaans. 
I try, so. And uh, the, the whole thing in Western came and in Limpopo, Limpopo, yeah. <laughs> so now I subscribe to this. So what's happening is this front end now sends the tags and the template to the notification hub. So you see uh, that stuff is now subscribed. So what I'm going to do next is actually inserting a message which then triggers my script which then sends the message to the notification hub. So let's say I, we're going to have uh, heavy rain. No, that's unfair, heavy rain. Let's say big waves because I, I really hope you're going to have some good weather. So large waves. Um, yeah, <clears throat> cross well and so now let's push this. And wait. So Oh, I didn't subscribe for big waves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, sorry, we, we're going to get heavy rain. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you see, it is actually in Afrikaans. Uh, I, I mean, uh, as good as I can uh, write Afrikaans. But the, thank you. So the point I wanted to show you here is, if you abstract the complexity of sending these messages and you abstract the complexity of personalization and routing into a notification hub, that stuff, to build that kind of stuff, becomes actually fairly, fairly simple. And we can guarantee timely deliver, uh, only obviously to the notification service, but not to the NTYs. But I'm going to publish that stuff so you can play around with it. I'm also going to publish uh, the Android version of it, so in the case you don't want to play around with Windows. But, which, there is no reason not to. <laughs> but I heard, uh, that's the only debate which is allowed during this conference, correct? Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, finish off by just, as I was saying, under the hood, it's a pops up service, which is called Service Bus. So if you want to better understand how this works, from an architectural perspective, uh, what we have is the gateway, it's really the Windows Azure load balanced gateway, which then routes it to the actual message broker. So once you actually register a message, the message information, including the template and the tags, they actually get stored in the registration store. When you send a message, you then send this message to the message broker. The message broker then stores the message in a message store, which is really now the store of the pops up service. And then you can imagine we have multiple notification instances. So if there are many subscribers, we use more than one notification instance to read the message from the store and send it to all the different registrations. So that's where we translate the templates. That's where we figure out uh, what are the tags you're interested in. So that's uh, the under the hood architecture on which uh, this service is actually built on. So in closing, if you really start to think uh, about this, I mean, there is no reason why you should actually struggle building that stuff yourself. And if you build it yourself, take the concepts. Take the concepts of tax for routing, 
templates for personalization. I mean, they're absolutely brilliant. But if you think a little bit bigger, uh, the whole Internet of Things, Notification Hub can do the, uh, the service bus, which is underneath, can do actually the very same thing. So even if you think that uh, the devices that you're using, they're not supported by Notification Hub, you can actually use the underlying service bus infrastructure, and we use this for a lot of the Internet of Things projects that we're currently doing. So sensors that just do a simple HTTP call, and then you, know, you can push stuff out to multiple other devices. If you want to start, we actually uh, have uh, a little booth on the very back, and, and uh, my, my colleagues, they're happy to help you showing how you really get stuff started. And I think you also get a free $200 uh, voucher in your bag that you can use to send, I think, trillions of notifications to your followers. Or <laughs> uh, with this, I, I really would like to open up for uh, for some questions. It was so boring. <laughs> yeah? Uh, w w one of the things that you were doing is supplying the uh, idea that your customers register with the notification service, but now you're missing the link where your back end knows about your customers. So does your backend have the ability of querying to find that you have 10,000 users, that there is a user called Richard? Oh, yeah. So there is a lot of, I haven't showed you this, but there's a lot of telemetric as part of the service uh, that goes into a lot of details, for instance, where, what, what, you know, whether messages are sent successfully or not, and so forth. And the whole stuff is actually accessible through a REST API. Any other questions? So is it just the tele Is it just the telemetrics that it, that's available via REST API or is it the notification hub itself that's available via REST API and do you have uh, API wrappers in which languages do you have wrappers Okay so first of all I mean if you look at Windows Azure everything you do through the portal you can do to REST because the portal is built on our REST API so that should answer your first question. And that applies also to the notification hub. Uh, I can show you something which uh, we have a little uh, application which is built on the RESP and the management API, which is the Service Bus Explorer, which gives you insight into, let's retrieve all registrations, for instance. Uh, something, oh yeah. So you would actually get uh, all the registered uh, devices. Uh, it must be somewhere uh, a win because of the resizing. Or, but you would get all the registered devices. You can play around with this. And that's all built, actually, on, on the REST API. In terms of client APIs, we have client APIs for JavaScript, HTML, Android, iOS, and a Windows platform. Uh, was there a third? No. Awesome. Any last questions? We'll close. Great. Let's thank Bea.